All right, and welcome again. Um, yep, we finished this marathon for the Barask, and um, let me tell you, if you want a free tank, you can do this marathon. You got the time, you got you know the energy, you got your health, and you can sacrifice a few things in your life, in your real life. Then you, yeah, there you go. But otherwise, uh, it's not worth it. And I've had the privilege of having nothing but negativity from Wargaming through this marathon. Bad teams, bad RNG, bad everything, and on top of that, uh, you get chat banned for saying absolutely nothing. Um, but hey, you, you're getting a free tank at your aid premium, you can train your crews or whatever, so that's up to you. But hey, we go on to the game, and this episode is about the IKV-65-2 and the IKV-90B, the tier 6 versus the tier 7. Which one is better? Well, let's start with the tier 6 here. We got two options in terms of firepower. We got the stock gun, and we got the upgraded gun, right? The tier 7 one. So, which one would you want? I recommend the stock one. Why? The rate of fire is number one. Right? But yeah, but the tier 7, you know, the upgraded one will have better penetration and better aim time. Um, true. But again, the penetration value, it jumps from 155 on standard a AP to 180. But heat, the premium round, will stay at 230. So you're thinking maybe you want to save some credit, right? And the upgrade gun would be better. Uh, if you're going to see tier 8, let me see, say this. You will need heat. And if you fire heat, and it's the same penetration as the gun before it, why not just use the gun before it? You have better rate of fire. The average damage per minute is better. I mean, you're going from 1582 to 1485. It's not much, but it could save your life. Uh, so, but it's up to you again. Now, according to the uh, tank comparison in, inside the game, it tells you that the tier 6 is somewhat better than the tier 7, but my experience has proven that the tier 7 was actually better. I've had some bad RNG, some bad accuracy, some bad uh, things happen with the tier 7, but generally speaking I've had nothing but good with it so someone must be doing something terribly bad in the tier 7 that they uh, you know can't or I don't know so basically the tier 7 the first time I played it with a 75% trained crew I had a first mastery badge when I finally completed, uh, actually before I, I even completed training my crew to 100%, uh, percent, which by the way was the same crew I used on the tier 6, um, I aced it. And I've aced it several times, uh, I can't even count how many times uh, during a uh, period of one week. So here we go, it's the same alpha, average damage per shot. 240 damage the uh, AP of course this is the upgraded gun on the uh, tier 7 the AP penetration jumps to 210 um, that's that's good <laughs> so much better than the tier 6 uh, right of fire is better your gun loading time improves so much and uh, the gun traverse I like, like you gain 
five degrees on each side, so you don't, the tank doesn't have to move too much, and therefore you will not break your uh, your camo as much as you would the tier six. Now, according to this game, the aim time and the dispersion time are better on the tier six gun for the tiers uh, for that gave you 65 too. But my experience so far with tier 7 has been much better than it was with the tier 6. Um, and it seems to me that it's harder for people to shoot the tier 7. It's like it was much, so much easier for the tier 6 to be penetrated and shot because it was so kind of bulky in at least in my eyes in comparison with the tier 7. Um, but yeah, that's my experience, and, uh, all right, let's go straight to the, to the replays. See you there. Alright, here we go. We are tier 6 versus tier 8, Prokhorovka in counter mode, um, this is 1.7.1. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I started plotting, you know, during the uh, countdown, where I should go and how the team is supposed to be playing. And uh, so far, it seems like everyone wanting to go to the flag, right? Our light tank started going the right way, then he decided to go to the flag as well, which I think is a bad idea for him. Um, especially that he didn't even cross the rails, the railway, to uh, spot incomings uh, to the flags. So we have no idea who's going to the flag, who's coming this way uh, to the one two. All right, so J Panther two is in a good spot, but uh, there's no one spotting. Our heavies, our major heavies, are on the like the camping side. Um, uh, <laughs> I still can't, you know, process our IS-3A coming to the uh, two line on this uh, map mode. Um, I just tried to blind fire to, I don't know, shake something. Our light tank had lost his health going around there, but then he comes here to do nothing except camp. And uh, our team starts to basically lose. And we're speeding it up because it's, it's extremely campy, it's getting boring. Uh, our team starts to lose one by one and slow it down a little bit. And uh, there we go, we spotted this guy. He was forced to move, therefore he was using his uh, uh, binos instead of gutted optics and we managed to shoot him and it got spotted. And we got the SS, the SS the, our light tank should have had, but uh, speeded it up again. And this is another, so I fall back, I go forward to the e ones uh, push. Uh, our friend from Bulgaria, Kelly, gets decimated and, uh, but hey, it's a tier 8 match. And, uh, yeah, our team, even though they looked like they were going to control, uh, the flag area, they failed. Why? They didn't take the hill, they didn't take the, uh, uh necessary, uh, locations to shoot across so here I am on the E1 in a spot where our light tank should have should have been to spot for us and I'm um, just going back and forth you know using my binos and uh, yeah just like that trying to shoot and uh, trying to win it for for the team It's, I still don't understand why our tier 8 heavy decided to go to the 2 line and just camp. He, 
that he didn't push, he didn't go to the sixth line, he didn't go to the hill where he could fight and use his auto lo auto reloading gun. But he's here on the two line being um, being a tank destroyer basically. Okay, our light tank decides to no idea what. He's pushing forward. He is most definitely going to die. And he is. <laughs> Without spotting anything. Oh. <laughs> there we go. At least he spotted that guy, the SCRV, right? And here we go. Help the team kill an, an enemy tank while like, getting, you know, the SS and getting my own damage. And our IS-3A is still in the back. And... It has us four versus them. Now, my biggest fear here is... Alright, so they have... What, a Scorpion G? And they have a Super Hellcat. So, the Super Hellcat has superior view range. He can spot me at any any point if he has good crew. Uh, their Hellcat is being uh, cute. And I guess one shot, that's a good RNG hit, 257. Um, now I look at and see their Super Hellcat in the back. Their, their SCRV trying to uh, spot for them. And I just can't save that Artie. So, HE. Alright, here we go. Here's the HE, and uh, I just want to pen 324. And even though I'm so far away from that guy, I still get the assist on him. Now, should I go reset or should I just stay where I am? I decide to stay where I am. Why? Because of those stinking three SPGs that can one shot me. They could get lucky and I just lose. The one who's supposed to be going to reset is the IS3A. He's the one who should be out there fighting. And that's how I rationalize this. I just don't want to get killed. I want to use this game to, you know, get whatever is necessary. If my team can't help me win, they can't help themselves, then screw it. And this is the first time I get, I'm getting spotted, I think, and uh, that's it. Now we go to the tier 7 match. Alright, welcome back. And this is... Tier 7s versus Tier 8s on uh, Highway. Alright, so the most important thing, in my opinion, is to break these houses over here. Also, th that that one over there, but I, I didn't feel like I had enough time to do so. Mostly because I'm thinking they have faster uh, tank and their deployment might, might be better. And also, I'm seeing my light tanks and my Super Hellcat go to very aggressive locations. So I wanted to go where I could support them. Um, this is only a few battles in. Um, yeah, I, I don't have very much experience in this tank, in this battle here. But uh, I'm watching what's going on, how things are developing. And I'm right away seeing that the field is getting uh, washed out, we don't have much control on it, and I wanted to go to get closer so I can have view range on them. And bad luck, but hey, whatever. In any case, the fun starts right about now, and this battle was very awkward in my opinion, because of how our team started to uh, to lose. Uh, anyway, it doesn't matter. 
at this moment I didn't realize I was so focused on shooting the uh, their mediums and lights and I didn't realize there's a super Hellcat right out here in the open and first shot no splash still no splash and our art is still aiming at that area again no splash therefore you get the kill <laughs> I love shots like this you're killing things blind you know all right so that's that was probably the gun being bad you know? all right right here I wish I, I had better uh, reload time but still this is not bad in any case we are destroying the walls that are covering that guy and uh, we are even two for two and look at this look at this beautiful thing I'll take that tracking damage, I don't care, it's, it's beautiful, taking down that tier 8 uh, tank, but that guy, he's getting lucky. Okay, so, I'm just, you know, having wishful thinking, okay, I wish he would come out so I can hit him, I want him to be stupid enough so I can hit him, and then I'm, I notice, we have a heavy, a top tank heavy, camping. Basically, he's AFK. He's botting him, just being a bot. So he, 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 I don't know. He, he didn't want to play. He has something going on in, in real life. He disconnected. Whatever. So here's the, my thought. I want to come back here so I can shoot the incomings, right? But, uh, again, I am still looking at these guys here in the middle. I see Kelly. He's getting spotted. I see the uh, T-71. He got killed over there. So that means Kelly would be by himself. He will be exposed to uh, uh, fire from the, uh, from the back. Also, one, two, three tanks on this, like, kind of surrounding him. And I want to save him here. So, with the Scorpion G by himself, my guy here by himself is trying to retreat. I decide to go here so I can maybe have shots here, maybe, you know, shoot whatever. Um, you know, just trying to be more helpful. But in my opinion, this, in a different scenario, this would have been a very bad idea. It would have been best if I go to uh, A8, for example, or A7, and use these bushes to shoot the incoming, right? The incoming heavies. But, this is where I get lucky. He didn't even manage to spot me, so um, I'm not complaining. Alright, things are still the same. I'm hoping to see the... Uh, uh, the light tank to kill him, but still nothing until now. And he is being. He still doesn't spot me. <laughs> okay, so I decide let that guy be there. That's fine. I need to shoot low health tanks that are coming in. Now I get spotted. Kelly kills the enemy light tank, and this is where I'm like, 
starting to panic. I'm thinking their enemy SVG will be looking at me, he probably will one shot me, so I'm just. You, you gotta run away. You have to maintain your uh, camo, and then with them capping us, and we have lost our uh, SVG in the. In the uh, during this because they don't want to move out so I'm just continuously looking at the minimap seeing that our scorpion is over there Skelly is pro here probably trying to either uh, cover T31-1 uh, dash or cover our base from over there I have no idea if he could uh, now that I know I got spotted the enemy already got spotted, so the enemy artist probably now is busy uh, with the medium that's trying so close to him. I try to keep these heavies, the last two, spotted for our guys to snipe them. Alright, so using the, these wishes here, I try to go in. Um, Give my tier 8 and my platoon mate, you know, a chance to shoot these guys. So far, I'm not the one spotting them. And sadly, this is where that shack, I should have, you know, destroyed that one so they don't use it at all. And, uh, yeah, whatever. It is what it is. I'm trying, I'm trying so hard not to fire, not to open, you know, just so I can spot as much as I could. But the Scorpion G decides to join me here. And he makes the mistake that gets him killed. Alright, well did he was he get was he spotted? I have no idea. Was it blind fired by Ardy? Well, if it is, then Artie got extremely lucky. Now... Yeah. This is the classic, you know, spot them, let someone else shoot them scenario. While being afraid, you know, their Artie might be finding me and, and killing me in the process. And this is where we are counting on the T-34-1 to go kill their Artie, eliminate him. Let's speed it up a little bit. Alright, the IS-3 is being extremely careful. Um, not anymore, he made a mistake. I still don't get spotted. The T-34-1 manages to kill their RD. And that's a good job. But he loses uh, his health to... TS-5, the US Super Tank Destroyer camping in the back, and we surprise this heavy, take him down, we still have our HV intact, we got brothers in arms, and we are going in, let's speed it up. Alright, so this is where I was thinking, we need to split a little bit. I still have my HP, Kelly has half of his, um, 440 uh, alpha, I think it is, uh, for the TS-5, and I'm thinking, I could take a hit. Kelly probably can't, unless uh, the TS-5 uh, low rolls. But what we, what we wanted is to create a crossfire on the TS-5, since he doesn't have a turret. There we go, he shoots me straight and uh, magnificent. That ground was so bad, he deserved to get hit. Alright, so Kelly now was shooting that ES5 and giving me my assist. And now Kelly spotted him. Now the ES5 gets distracted by Kelly and I go in. I fully look at him and the shot goes somewhere, I know, I'm guessing it went through him, if not it went over him to hit the ground behind him. 
And with that, auto aim engaged and shoot at the TS5. So now the TS5 is completely distracted. He doesn't know, should I shoot this guy, should I shoot that guy? And we get lucky here and this is it. These tier 7s manage to overwhelm the uh, tier 8s. And that's why it's very important for people to come back and uh, reset their base instead of just YOLO and attempt to cap, 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 cap. Alright, well, we'll see it in the uh, battle details. Alright, let's start with the uh, battle details for the IKV 65-2. And as we can see here, no ace tanker, but we managed to three mark this one. Um, we can see the IS-3A. He had the top, you know, damage, high caliber. Um, he used his auto reloader to just farm damage and sit in the back. And uh, I want to say he did nothing, but he kind of could have done more. I could have done more. But we can see that the experience here on a defeat, 741. But uh, yeah, imagine if that was a win, right? We managed to get 25,000 in credits. And um, just check out the <laughs> assist. I mean, 3,397. That's pretty darn good for a tank destroyer, right? And for the uh, tier 7, we see it's an ace tanker with a brothers in arms. Um, we came second uh, in damage, I think, here, right? No, third in, on damage. Uh, but first, second on XP. So, can't complain, 1,138 base XP. 13,116 without premium uh, account um, 1419 in assist and yeah I, I do prefer the tier 7 over the tier 6 um, but we can see how we, both of them can be played but the gun tends to be a bit troll on both uh, tanks until you get to the UDAS and then it starts to get better, but again, this is Wargaming, and it has RNG. And, uh, yep, well, thank you for watching, and uh, I hope you find something here that's, that was interesting, you didn't know about before, and uh, good luck.